Modern aircraft carriers come with a hefty price tag, and the latest one from America, the Gerald R. Ford, is no exception, costing a whopping $13 billion each. The total cost for the entire Ford program has already reached $120 billion, a substantial amount by any measure. However, it's essential to understand that these carriers are much more than just boats. They can be considered floating cities equipped with intricate subsystems, enabling them to wield air power globally. Aircraft carriers are like the Ferraris or McLarens of the naval world, showcasing prestige that only a select few nations can afford. The price tag on these carriers puts them out of reach for most countries, as the cost often exceeds the annual GDP of many nations. Unlike luxury cars, though, aircraft carriers offer more than just a flashy status symbol. Owning one provides unique capabilities that go beyond the functionality of battleships or destroyers. Essentially, an aircraft carrier acts as a mobile airfield, enabling the ferrying and launching of aircraft, making it an invaluable tool for projecting power across distant shores. When it comes to launching aircraft from afar, one option is to have airfields on foreign soil. However, most countries don't have this luxury. The US, on the other hand, stands out as an exception with its extensive network of foreign military bases. While these bases are valuable in a set conflict with clear boundaries, they lack the flexibility needed for diverse and sometimes unpredictable power projection in enforcing foreign policies. This is where an aircraft carrier becomes a valuable asset. Think of an aircraft carrier as more than just a floating vessel. It's practically a floating city with a whopping 5,000 sailors on board at any given time. To cater to this massive crew, the carrier is equipped with multiple galleys and mess halls, churning out a staggering 18,000 meals daily. It's not just about the food. It's about the scale and intricacy of managing a modern aircraft carrier. Now, the reason for all these meals and sailors boils down to one key mission, projecting air power. The entire floating city or aircraft carrier is designed for this purpose. To make it happen, the carrier boasts a unique structure and a set of specialized systems. When it comes to supporting flight operations, the carrier's hull is no ordinary shell. It's made of robust steel plates, several inches thick, providing unparalleled protection against fire and battle damage, as highlighted by How Stuff Works. This heavy-duty body is a crucial element in ensuring the carrier's effectiveness in the face of challenges. When it comes to structural support, the aircraft carrier is built with three main horizontal components stretching across its entire hull. The keel, which acts as the iron backbone at the ship's bottom, the flight deck, and the hangar deck. The hangar deck serves as the storage space for aircraft, while the flight deck is where these aircraft take off. Essentially, the entire structure of the ship is designed around the crucial functions of storing and launching aircraft. According to How Stuff Works, the hull portion below the waterline has a rounded and relatively narrow shape, while the section above water widens to create the expansive flight deck space. Notably, the lower section of the ship features a double bottom, which is exactly what it sounds like. Two layers of steel plating. This double-bottom design provides extra protection, offering a safeguard against torpedoes or accidents at sea, enhancing the carrier's overall resilience. Launching aircraft from carriers involves catapults, mechanisms that pull aircraft across the flight deck and propel them off the front of the boat. Traditionally, steam-powered catapults were the go-to, still in use on the Nimitz-class carriers. However, the advanced Ford-class opts for the cutting-edge electromagnetic aircraft launch system, EMAILS. This system employs a newly developed linear induction motor, creating electric currents to generate magnetic fields that smoothly pull the aircraft along the deck. Although the EMAILS was costly to research and develop, it promises a smoother acceleration compared to the outdated steam catapults. 
But launching aircraft is just one aspect of an aircraft carrier's functionality. Landing them is equally important. Aircraft use a tail hook to catch wires laid down along the flight deck, a relatively low-tech but effective system. To power this entire operation, aircraft carriers are equipped with a nuclear reactor. The advantage of a nuclear reactor is its ability to keep the carrier operational indefinitely, potentially for decades, without the need for frequent refueling. In recent years, China's notorious carrier killer missiles have been grabbing attention due to their capability to pose a threat to U.S. Navy aircraft carriers and restrict their operations near the Chinese coastline. The Dongfeng-26, DF-26, stands out as China's most powerful anti-ship missile, boasting a modular design that can accommodate different warhead types. Standing at 46 feet tall and weighing 44,000 pounds, the DF-26 has a range of up to 2,500 miles, a 4,000-pound payload, and satellite targeting. This missile theoretically has the potential to reach U.S. Navy warships in the western Pacific Ocean, including the South China Sea. Despite the concerns surrounding these carrier killers, insights from senior Navy officials suggest there is room for debate regarding their effectiveness. While acknowledging the threat, Navy officials emphasize the ability of U.S. aircraft carriers to operate wherever necessary for attacks. The U.S. Navy is actively advancing its ship defense technologies to counter such threats. These developments include ship-based lasers, electronic warfare applications, and innovative platforms like the MQ-25 Stingray Carrier Launched Refueler Drone. The Navy's high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance Helios equips destroyers. Helios not only offers a quiet, low-cost, and scalable solution, but also acts as a sensor for target tracking and surveillance. This technology enhances the Navy's ability to close in on enemy positions, combining deck-mounted guns with high-speed laser weapons featuring precision guidance technology John Rambo, Vice President and General Manager of Lockheed Martin Rotary and Mission Systems and Integrated Warfare Systems and Sensors, emphasized Helios's compatibility with ships, seamlessly integrating into their hardware, cooling systems, and power systems during a previous phase of development. As new technologies like lasers continue to reshape the tactical landscape, the U.S. Navy remains at the forefront of enhancing its capabilities to navigate the evolving challenges of ocean warfare. Northrop Grumman, as the prime contractor for the Surface Electronic Warfare Improvement Program, CWIP, Block 3, is enhancing the U.S. Navy's Electronic Warfare, EW, capabilities. This program introduces an advanced offensive electronic attack capability and the future integration of EW with information operations, I.O. CWIP B3 goes beyond locating, jamming, and disrupting threats. It conducts offensive operations against enemy electronic sources such as communications networks, data links, and radar systems. Designed for installation on Navy's DDG-51 destroyers, CYP Block 3 is set to become operational in the next few years. Navy officials also indicate that the new Constellation class Frigate is engineered to incorporate advanced EW systems. The CWIP Block 3 EW system utilizes 16 ACTI electronically scanned arrays, AESAs, to emit targeted pencil beams. Mike Meany, Northrop Grumman's Vice President for Land and Maritime Sensors, highlights the advantage of AESA generating narrow and focused beams. This capability allows the system to direct energy precisely where needed, enhancing tracking efficiency. The goal is to connect intelligence gathering technology with EW attack and defense systems by synthesizing IO and EW through continuous software upgrades and threat monitoring. The narrower signal transmission of the EW weapon significantly reduces detectability, making it less likely to reveal its location. In contrast, broader electronic emissions are more easily detectable by adversaries. The advanced CWIP system empowers commanders to control what the adversary perceives, effectively limiting them to seeing what you want them to see.
Upgraded defenses play a crucial role in safeguarding U.S. Navy ships against various threats. Traditional but highly effective, these kinetic defenses involve interceptor missiles deployed on Navy destroyers and cruisers. These missiles, housed in vertical launch systems, are designed to intercept and destroy enemy anti-ship missiles, ballistic missiles, and certain aircraft. Among the tiered capacity of ship-fired interceptors is the RIM-174 Standard Missile 6, SM-6, offering the longest range. The SM-6, equipped with improved guidance and extended reach in its Block 2A version, can track long-range ballistic missiles, even intercontinental ones, during their terminal phase. This is when the missile re-enters the atmosphere, making it a formidable defense. The American SM-6 poses a potential threat to the Chinese DF-26 missile. With software upgrades enhancing its dual-mode seeker, the SM-6 can intercept the DF-26 shortly after launch and in its terminal phase. The missile's ability to send a forward ping without relying on a ship-based illuminator improves its tracking and maneuvering capabilities, making it adept at countering Chinese anti-ship missiles. Additionally, the SM-6, part of the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter Air NIFCCA system, can intercept cruise missile threats beyond the radar horizon. NIFCCA uses aerial gateways like E-2D Advanced Hawkeye or F-35 stealth fighters to detect threats from distances not accessible to ship-based radars. Other interceptor weapons in the Navy's arsenal include the Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile Block II, ESSM, effective in sea-skimming mode against low-altitude cruise missiles, medium-range surface-to-air missiles like RIM-66, Standard MR, SM-2, and infrared homing RIM-116 rolling airframe, missile, ram, target various threats, including small boats, drones, helicopters, and incoming rounds. For close-range defense, the Close-In Weapons System, CIWS, a phalanx interceptor gun, fires numerous projectiles per second to create a defensive barrage. The upgraded CIWS Block 1B variant is deployed across Navy destroyers, cruisers, amphibious assault ships, and potentially aircraft carriers, offering comprehensive protection against air and surface threats.
baru lahir lah roja ni Kalau mana dia membuat pada ini macam. Oh ya, bintang rum, bintang rum.